Oh my god, that's the second best thing I've ever had in my mouth, Brad. What's the first best thing? Hey, you figure it out. You got an imagination. <laughs> The Fred Minnick Show is brought to you by Michter's and 291 Colorado Whiskey. And welcome to a special edition of uh, the Fred Minnick Show coming in from uh, Catoctin Creek or Antarctica. I'm not quite sure. Uh, Scott, are you Scott? Are you and Becky okay as Gore kidnapped you? Ah, Gore! Gore! <laughs> no, we're doing just great here. That's awesome. Well, it's great to see you. And of course... Uh, your new buddies from Gore are there. We've had Jismac on the show before. Um, it looks like he's got, you know, he's got a little something in his rib cage there. Is he? Is he been going around and cracking into barrels? No, we we lost a we lost an employee earlier. He, he was hungry. Oh my goodness. Well, I know, I know. Like when you are making whiskey, you know, one of the worst you 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 never make whiskey as good as when you are like in, afraid for your life. So. Yeah. And I know that they have, you've been making whiskey for Gwar. What's that been like? Have you ever feared for your safety? Are you in constant danger? What's it like, you know, with your life on the line for Gwar making whiskey right now? It's a bit of a hostage situation. You know, they, they came the last time and they ate our dog. And uh, so, but now we're kind of entering into that, um, that phase where, you know, we're kind of falling in love with our captors, you know, what do you call that? Stockholm, uh, Stockholm right. syndrome. Yeah, Stockholm That's syndrome. it. Stockholm yeah. syndrome. Yeah, we left Bone Snapper here the whole time while they were, you know, he's our bodyguard. We left him here the whole time that they've been distilling to make sure that we get the quality hoops. Well, I, you know, what's exciting about this to, to me is like, you know, I had Jismac on the show previously, and I feel like, you know, we really kind of we we bonded o- over whiskey, and I survived because he said the interview didn't suck. So he wasn't going to kill me. So I'm excited that, you know, was able to do this, come back. But uh, I mean, how the hell do you make whiskey for Gore? Are you distilling blood? Are you like, you know, capturing <laughs> rabbits or what, what are you doing? How, how are you making whiskey well, for them? There's a, there's a whole lot of trade secret going on in there. And, you know, all of the protein that we're putting into this whiskey, we can't talk about, but, uh, <laughs> Becky basically is the is the queen of the whiskey, and so she should probably be the one to talk about that. I, I'm afraid I can't talk. Get over about here that. and tell. Yeah, yeah, but hey, Fred, the only reason hey, you Fred. survived is because I was drunk and I forgot we even did the interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jismac, tell us what it, what has the whiskey making process been like for you? It's been uh, a lot of uh, passed out, uh, drunken nights. Uh, I've been drinking it straight from the uh, the uh, still itself. I haven't even waited for the finishing process. So, That's awesome. Uh, now I'm really excited to see what. It, I mean, I thought the, the 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 clear stuff was great. So okay, so you like you like the clear stuff. Uh, so that's called uh, you know new make. Back in the old days, they would call it singling, but. Um, you know how is how are the other uh, band members in in the process? Because you know you're a uh, you're you're a you're a straight up G when it comes to whiskey drinking. Uh, I th- I think oh, I remember. I learned everything about drinking from Balsack. Don't don't blame me. Blame him. Well, I, right. I thought you told me. I thought you told me he was a vodka drinker, Jismac. Balsack will drink anything. <laughs> And everything you gotta, you gotta get yours before he comes to the party because he'll drink it all. So he's he's the guy that like if you've got the a really good bottle on the counter and it shows up missing, you know he's got it. All right, so you named the you named it uh, uh, Ragnarok Rye. Why uh, why that? Because that's a that's a known name, and uh, I know it's associated with your band, but it's also associated with like Viking culture and so forth. And just curious, why Ragnarok Rye? Well, the, the Vikings, they stole the Ragnarok mythology from us. The Ragnarok is a, what was thought to be a doomsday comet that was going to destroy the Earth in, in 1999, right? Mm. It ended up being our arch enemy, Cardinal Sin, who's a, a Christian 
robot from outer space who wanted to end all all sin and debauchery on Earth. So we brought in and some of the byproducts, the waste that ran out from us destroying this robot, was put into this whiskey. No, oh, okay. So there's a little bit of the secret ingredients we talked about. It's also in a. You guys showed me some pictures. It's in a really cool bottle. Can you can you show us the bottle on on the video? Oh, yeah, there it is. Now, yeah, so put that close to the camp. Bring the bring it down a little bit so we can see that topper. Get back. Yeah, baby. Oh, wow. so okay, so that's a pretty badass topper. That's going to give Blanton's a run for the money for uh, for the collectible. Um, and t so, tell us about the the bottle toppers or what uh, what they're all about, and you know. It, it, do you, how many of there them, are, how many of them are there? Trolls. Each topper is forged from the filling of a troll or an elf or some sort of woodland creature. And pole. There's and pole. Five bone snapper. There are five different heads. Well, each of the heads of the five musicians on board. Myself, Paul Sack, Jim Mack has his own bottle topper, our, our singer, Glothar, and Pusslis, and our bass player, DK. We all have our own bottle topper. We collect all five. Yeah, and that way you don't mix up whose booze is whose. When you see Ballsack drinking on your bottle topper, you know, hey, play off. You know, my head's on there. All right. All right, now I now you've piqued my curiosity because I didn't see them all in the photo that I, uh, that I was sent. Can you show me all of the bottle toppers? We can die. Yeah. I thought we were doing an interview. <laughs> show and tell, what the hell? I, I, look, I, look, I get excited about uh, bottle toppers here. That's that's all right. So here comes number one. You already saw the first one. There's beefcake. Beefcake. All right. It kind of looks like you know he. That also kind of looks like a uh, a Trojan. You know, like he could be like uh, a Trojan warrior. Which is kind of ironic because beefcake only rides bareback. <laughs> <laughs> he invented the Trojan horse. All right. Bareback. Yeah. Oh man, that is cool. That is cool. Now, what, are, right. what, what, are the, what are these uh, what are these made of uh told you the fillings of trolls fillings of trolls <laughs> fillings of trolls now I, I i didn't i didn't realize trolls had like such you know metallic metal plans. Stuff. They have great dental plans for trolls we cornered the market on dental plans <laughs> like troll dental obviously and then we got the last one here Low the wow. That These is... are three man. man. These are tight. Those are really cool. Actually, now, they were being hand carved by the slaves of Guar. We... And then the slaves hand hand uh hand sculpt those. Well, and of course, you know, Becky and and Scott are, are now your captives. And so yeah. Yeah. how would how would you how would you grade their job there, Jismac? I don't know. I think the bathrooms are nice here. The bathrooms are very clean, so that's good. I don't know about the process. I know about the process of drinking booze, not making it, so I leave it to the professionals. Becky here said she made a great hooch, and we're going to find out. I can't wait. All right. Well, now this is this is my first time to taste it, and, you know, I, I very rarely take, you know, taste something uh, – on air like this without previously tasting it, you know, to have a kind of an idea when I, when I'm tasting it with the maker of the product, I've only done that a few times before. I'm going to go ahead and pour it in my glass. Now, Catoctin Creek is, uh, is a brand that I of course have a, uh, particular appreciation for because it's, um, you know, they've done such a good job of, Helping bring back a, a new a new style of rye, I get very excited when uh, when they do anything. Uh, we dr I've drank in this with with some uh, some folks before. You know, I've got my this is one of my favorite pours in their collection, mm -hmm. the uh, Rabble Rouser, and of course nice. I did a barrel pick for uh, for Louder Than Life and uh, for Bourbon and Beyond. But um, now I'm going to taste. Uh, the Gore Ragnarok Rye. Yeah, that's right. Enough about you, friend. Let's go to us. <laughs> Got kind of a fun, smoky nose with the 
got a like a barbecue thing going on. Oh my god, that's the second best thing I've ever had in my mouth, Brent. What's the first best thing? Hey, you figure it out. You got an imagination. <laughs> you do sick people. All right, here we go. It'd be great if Fred just passed out <laughs> just off screen right now, just drunk. Bam, one shot done. No, I, was, I said that out loud, shit. I was internal dialogue. <laughs> so it's it's finished in uh, cherry and maple wood or the stave. So you guys you you do the do you do stave inserts or are you yes. So this, it's white oak, regular white oak barrel with the cherry and the uh, maple would stay sugar maple. Okay. So this is this is like a this is like a barbecue like um like barbecue baked beans. You got that brown sugar. Uh, you got that kind of like uh, smoky savoriness from like the bacon. And then, um, you know, this really does remind me of, of, of just having some barbecue. Uh, well, well done, guys. This is this is a this is a great addition to to the rye whiskey scene. And uh, I think it's one of the best uh, one of the best tastes I've had from uh, Catoctin Creek. Um, you did a you guys you did a good job. Like uh, any, any, I guess. Horses in there, Scott was a good idea. <laughs> There's seven horses in every barrel. Get that smoky barbecue flavor. You know, I I rode that uh, glacier to Antarctica, and I, I hope it paid off the water. But uh, I guess it did. It did. It did. That glacial water is top. And yeah. and it shows that we work really well under pressure of uh, threat of death. You you, so. can, you can taste the fear. <laughs> 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 I can anyhow. <laughs> You'll feel the violence later. You know, I, 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 I really, I, I really do think this is, um, this is a, this is the kind of like you know rye that will, I think, convert a uh, a Scotch drinker. Um, there's not a there's not a lot of whiskeys, lot of, not a lot of American whiskeys that can convert a staunch uh, uh, Scotch drinker, but. This has a lot of that kind of, you know, beautiful uh, smokiness and sweetness underneath that that I think uh, Scotch drinkers find very appealing. But um, this is this is very good. I mean, hell, I, I like it more. I taste it. We're hoping that's going to work on judges and cops <laughs> and soccer moms and everybody, so that everybody chills the hell out. And just leave the killing to Guar. There's a little too much killing in America. We've been off, you know, we've had a lot of time off during COVID. And we want to get back to killing you people. We're hoping that this is going to help. Well, I think I think if you're looking for something to bring people together, to get people to, uh, to cut back on killing one another, I think this whiskey could, uh, in the right hands, could, could help people have a good time. So, well, well done, yeah, Gore. Well done. Bye. Fuck out. <laughs> so I would actually, uh, I, I, I don't have a whole lot left, but I do know that I'm going to need, I'm going to need uh, substantial amounts uh, in order to, you know, continue my. I, I feel like a special power at me coming on here, like there's some kind of <laughs> magical right. element. Is is this kind of like your? Is, I, we'll, we'll make sure you get some of these guys to you, Fred. Uh, but I yeah. think I, I think I know what this whiskey's really about. This is turning us in, into uh, into your species, isn't it? This this stuff is this is meant to convert us in um, into your species. Uh, well, just or just you know, complete abject slavery and followers of our. <laughs> I mean, that's what we really want because. We've been so pacified by, you know, crack cocaine on this planet 
and booze and all the other vices that you humans have. I don't think we're going to leave. Like each member of Guar has a different vice. Mine happens to be the whiskey. Uh, but, you know, you guys do a really good job with vice. So we're going to stick around for it. And I'm glad that uh, Ragnarok Rod is going to be out there uh, to gain us some more followers, worshipers, and just some more drunks in the world. Well, okay. We call- What's yeah. that? Talent juice. Talent juice. Yeah. If you finish a bottle of Ragnarok Rye, you'll feel like you are a scum dog. You'll feel like a member of war. Unfortunately, the next morning, you'll wake up being a war slave. Okay. All right. So, in other words, drink this responsibly, folks. Do not uh, drink the whole bottle. You'll, uh, you, 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 unless you don't value your freedom. But uh, well, well done. <laughs> You drink enough of this, you'll think you know how to play guitar. <laughs> well, again, kudos to you all. Uh, congrats uh, on this. Where, uh, when are you all uh, back uh, back playing uh, on tour again? Are you all? Do you have any shows booked coming up? You know, there's, there's nothing. There's nothing we can tell you right now, Fred. We're here to talk about hoops and have a nice sunny day here in Virginia. It's been a long time since we've been in Virginia. But uh, I don't know about any of that stuff. Sleepy Pete Martini, our manager, I'm sure he has something planned. He's been selling our stuff left and right, and I'm sure once awesome. COVID's over, we're safe. We're going to be back on tour. We're going to be making records. We're going to be making dildos and whiskey. We're doing everything. We're still in our ever-ending quest to take over this planet. We're just going to do it one sip at a time. All right, here's, here's a question for you. If... All right, so someone wants to get Ragnarok Rye. What album do they listen to uh, from beginning to end to go with the whiskey? All of them. Yeah, you don't need <laughs> the album. But actually, you this entire bottle, you have to listen to our entire catalog. I, I, I can see that happening for somebody. Yep. So Download it, yep. Well, congratulations on this. Uh, and, I, and I don't. I, I was I was a little nervous that I might be getting murdered, you know, afterward. But um, this is this is legitimately good. And if you love barbecue, if you love that kind of like uh, brown sugar uh, kind of flavor with the smokiness behind it, you know, this is this is going to be a, a money whiskey for you. So um, congratulations, Gore and, and Scott. I, I hope your freedom is obtained soon because I miss you. <laughs> that's nice to hear i don't know i feel a little bit under duress here well you know call me if you need help i've got friends i will i will <laughs> that's the reason that we didn't do this tasting in person when we tried to taste. You, you thought that if you didn't like it we'd kill you <laughs> that's you know i mean that could have something to, that could have weighed into it <laughs> be careful answering the door fred we know where you live that is true video call that is true. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, congratulations again. You know, be safe out there. Enjoy your murderous expeditions uh, en route to, uh, you know, Ragnarok Rye. Cheers. Thanks, Fred. Cheers. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> you son of a bitch, you. Give me some more of it. Right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, vodka sucks. Uh, yeah. Yes. So go ahead. Tell me. Tell me what your what your plan was with with making the Ragnarok Rye. So for this particular expression, I had had some done some experiments with staves uh, previously in mm-hmm. our spirit, and I was and I kind of had this hash, if you will, of of samples that I was playing with. And when we started talking to the band about this project. I felt like this would be a, the first time that I would be using it, and it would also be a really cool way to do something new and to bring something different to to the whole um, rye kind of situation. I'm not very um, coherent about it, but we. Um, so I so I was looking for my vision was that it wouldn't be only. So the, some of the whiskey that I use for this is not um, doesn't have staves, and some of it does. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to just use a small portion of those flavors to kind of accent the rest of the rye and not really dominate the conversation. So 
the cherry kind of cut through the cherry uh, staves were pretty prominent. So I kind of dialed that back in the mix and then kind of the maple come through. So I, I really get those kind of maple notes, that kind of brown sugary stuff. They came out really nicely. So I was really excited about it. Great. Can, can you see, can you holler at them to, you know, tone down a bit? Guys, can you take it down just a little bit, Scott? Can you? Fred's trying to talk to me. Uh, Fred, 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 just gonna shoot you know, we got Fred. Sorry, Fred, I don't control the situation here anymore. <laughs> so in terms how big how big were the staves? Oh, they weren't that they were like I mean, I use thirty gallon barrels, so they're not that long. You know? Okay. Mm -hmm. They fit. And how long how long were they in there? How long did you have to keep them in? Oh, it was only about I think I did these about five months. Okay, and this is and this is um and what was the age on the on, on the rye before you added that added the staves? About three years. That was no, it was a little. It was under two years. Under two yeah, years. Yeah, it was definitely okay. under two years. Yeah, because I wasn't quite sure when this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I wanted to give it a little time. And the, so, uh, and, the and the demand on it's been. Uh, you guys have been getting phone calls and people have been wanting to get it already, as I understand. And this is a 100% rye. And where yes. is your is your rye coming from Virginia? Where, where are you all getting it? Um, a lot of it is from Virginia. Um, probably about half of it is from Virginia. And then we have um, other regional, you know, regional sources. So it's like Virginia, Maryland, um, and a little bit of Pennsylvania, Southern Pennsylvania. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, so th this just followed your, uh, the typical, you know, uh, production methods that you do with Catoctin Creek. So, um, take us, take us through like your off the still proof, your barrel entry proof and, uh, all that good stuff. Yeah. So uh, off the still, it's just under 160, kind of not, not super low, but just like just under 160, mm -hmm. 150 to 160 in there. Um, then we go to the barrel at, um, so you're going to laugh, but it's 119.5. That's my lucky number that I chose a long time ago, and that's what I put it in the barrel at. Okay. And, uh, and then, um, these, then, then basically these, the um, staves are added into some of these barrels. I, if I'm, I probably have to check my notes, but I'm pretty sure the staves went into some of the Virginia oak barrels. Mm-hmm. And um, we had, so some of this, it's probably about, this consists of about seven barrels that I have blended together. Um, four of them had staves in them. Um, one was cherry and then three barrel of the other barrels had maple. And I kept them all like this disposition so I could kind of see which ones I liked for, you know the blend and then i took three additional um barrels that were in minnesota oak and blended them in on with the other to kind mm. of kind of meld it together i was really happy about it that when, minnesota oak's quite a bit more spicy isn't it isn't it a pretty spicy uh oak if, but what's interesting to me and this is just my experience because i get a lot of people who talk tell me about that spicy um, for me, to, the Minnesota oak comes and has this really nice kind of texture that I like to incorporate. The Virginia oak has kind of a soft, almost like coconut nutty bit stuff that goes on in my mouth. <laughs> and so when, to me, I like the combination of the two when I'm kind of creating this because I felt like it added some other layers of flavor to it. Mm, okay. Well, uh, I think you did a, I think you did a great job with this one and, uh, <clears throat> I think it's a home run. So thanks, Fred. I'm glad. I was really happy when I finally got it, um, put together on, was it Monday afternoon? I think I finally had everything all put together. Um, I, I, when I started looking at it, I was like, this is exactly what I'd hoped it would be. So I was really happy for it. That's awesome. Well, Congratulations on working with uh, you know one of one of the best acts in all of music, <laughs> Gwar, and uh, I hope your uh, your safety is never in question. So, um, <laughs> Becky, it was great. It's great seeing you, and I can't wait to yeah. I can't can't wait to hang out again in person. 
I know, I know. This year, maybe. Knock on wood. I got my vaccine. I'm double vaccinated, so I'm ready to go. Yeah. So, all right. Well, you have you be safe out there, and I will uh, I'll chat with you later. Thank you, Fred. Cheers.